Look, I think probably the last 12 months has really been evidenced by a real significant reduction in sale, sale rates. So we've seen sale volumes at historically low levels. They're back at sort of 1995, 1996 levels. Um, probably just over the last month or so, we've started to see a little bit more inquiry. We've started to see a little bit more activity. But I think probably one of the things that's starting to drive that is more that you know, affordability has improved. We've seen the um, prices come back a little bit. We've had you know, some wage increases. And I think that, that affordability component for buyers has improved. And I think we're just starting to see a little bit more inquiry out there at the moment. And that's probably been um, yeah, an, an additional catalyst has probably been the most recent interest rate drop, which I think it's probably more the sentiment that maybe interest rate rises aren't going to be significant, which is what's been signalled for the last 12 months, that in fact, you know, the latest trend is actually being down. So I think that's probably been one of the catalysts for the for investors to come back into the market and the first home buyers. Look, you know, that's, that may increase it, but I think it's probably more about the sentiment. Uh, I think a lot of investors were quite concerned about a, you know, 50 basis point, 100% basis point increase in interest rates in the short term. And that was certainly what was being signalled only six months ago. So I think that sort of had a lot of investors quite cautious. But I think as soon as that sentiment has changed a little bit and, um, you know, that recent interest rate drop, whilst in itself is not a, a, a big drop, uh, it's probably more that change in sentiment that is actually starting to entice some of the investors and first-home buyers back into the market. Look, I think by and large the biggest issue at the moment is confidence and uh, I think you know, people are probably more so aware of a lot of the global issues that are happening following the, the global financial crisis. It's still dominating most of our local papers and, um, you know, that uncertainty um, is very much playing into the minds of investors and, uh, and, you know, people looking at buying into the residential market. So, uh, you know, look, if we see that continue, it, it is a reason for people to sit on their hands and, uh, and I think that's what they have been doing. And um, so, you know, if it was to increase, then that's likely to, um, you know, probably become a negative impact on the property market, the housing market. Look, I think probably um, Western Australia and Queensland have probably been the two areas that have, uh, you know, actually performed strongest through 2006, 2007. Um, they then softened through um, 2010. Um, probably more significantly than a lot of the other states, but they're also the ones that are likely to see the biggest benefit from the mining investment. And uh, so, look, you know, our thinking is probably more Queensland and, and Western Australia are likely to start, you know, as that investment money starts to flow through, we'll start to see additional confidence coming back into those state economies, and that's likely to flow through to the housing market. Yeah, look, I think those areas and perhaps parts of Cairns and uh, the Whit Sundays, which are very much a tourism driven markets, and the high Australian dollar has um, seen tourism fall away, which has had a significant impact on those areas. Um, it is quite interesting that the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast um, are quite actively looking at increasing flights in and out of uh, direct flights in and out of the Sunshine Coast and Gold Coast to the mining towns. So, you know, that's likely to have some sort of improvement on the um, the employment um, status for those areas. And uh, of course, uh, you know, unemployment levels have a quite a direct correlation with, um, with housing values. So I think if we start to see more people fly in, fly out of Sunshine Coast and Gold Coast directly into the mines, it does start to underpin the, uh, the employment base there to a degree. I mean, obviously it's, it's a relatively small component uh, of the overall, but it's certainly an improvement. Um, look, I think so, but the reality is that's still a, a fairly long-term project. A lot of those, um, you know, projects aren't really going to get underway for another, you know, four, three, four, five years sort of thing. So, um, you know, we're not going to see a mass investment in the Gold Coast, you know, starting tomorrow. Um, I think, you know, there'll be a lot of other factors that will impact on it. But I think certainly just the, you know, the um, thought of having the Commonwealth Games coming there is likely to be the source of some sort of... Um, confidence will bring some confidence to the area just knowing the level of infrastructure that's likely to come you know associated with it